think we're in the right spot, man. Yeah. Is that cool or what? Yeah. All buffalo. All staging for the spawn to happen today. They are going to blow up in about three hours. See, Otter. Stroke your... Good fish, Ron. That's a good one. Oh, that's a solid fish. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. Good one. Oh, yeah. Every oh, yeah. From shore, Buffalo. Okay, probably one of the most common questions that gets asked me is, uh, what do I do with the fish after I shoot them? Uh, the common carp, I give them away. Um, I do have a guys that take them for turtle farms and crayfish farms and stuff like that. A lot of them in the spring of the year get thrown on the farmer's fields and they just disc them under. Uh, the common carp doesn't belong in our waters. It was brought over from Germany or something like that. And they, uh, they just don't belong here. They're tearing everything up. But the buffalo carp, that's what this is right here. You can see he's more silver colored. I mean, they're just, they're just a totally different fish. These are actually members of the minnow family. And they are delicious. And we're going to show you how to clean one and how to cook one. And I promise you, if you follow this and you do this, you will be out bow fishing and keeping every single buffalo you shoot just to, uh, to, to cook it up. We try to go out when they're spawning and just get as many as we possibly can and we fill up our freezer. Uh, family reunions we have, weddings, everybody loves it. I make, uh, I make buffalo ribs and I make carp balls. So we're going to show you how we uh, start that out. First thing, get your buffalo out. <coughs> um, now what I do, and this is very important, get yourself a sharp knife. Make sure it's good and sharp. And you want to go inside underneath a scale just like that peel it up and then jab your knife in but keep your knife up because if you stood here today and tried to cut into these scales you'd have a very dull knife and it'd take you all day so we want to go in one of these scales take the knife in and then just cut up just like this all the way down through to the belly just like that then you want to go just like you were filleting a a bluegill or a crappie or a walleye or anything like that you just want to run a knife down just like this now when you get to about to the anal fin right here on them with your cut you just want to start cutting upwards this meat back here in the tail is no good it's really red it's really tough it tastes it's just nasty so what I want to do is just cut up just like that now you do just like you would a bluegill or anything you cut right down to the ribs just like that now here's where you're going to need some little bit heavier duty equipment um, we have a tin snips I use little wire cutters and I have a meat cleaver for this part the first initial cut into the fish I like to use a meat cleaver to break them ribs and just work your way right up to the head just like that Once you're through all the ribs, then it's just like taking a, there you go. So now you got that. Got one half of your fish laying here, the other half's laying here. 
Now what I like to do is take, and you can see there's some eggs left in here and some guts, and we got some fatty deposits. Um, you want to pull them off, and a lot of times they don't always have this black membrane. Sometimes it's white, but you just want to get all that fatty stuff off of there. And basically, we're going to gut the fish just like this. And you can see how that fatty stuff pulls right up. You get her gutted just like this. Sure you have a big big garbage can when you're doing this. And that's where we're at right now. Now this when a meat cleaver doesn't work so good. So I like to do is take my little wire cutters, or if you got a big fish, you can use a tin slips. But you can see the ribs right here. Get your knife in there. Cut her back like this, and then just fillet it kind of reverse style here until you hit a rib. Once you hit them ribs, and you just take it, start cutting each individual rib, and you can see them in here. This really is not that hard of a job. There's really no reason for throwing these fish back. Like I said, they're native. They're not a regular carp. They don't suck the bottom. They're a plankton eater. You can see their mouth ain't on the bottom sucking like a carp is. It's out here and they open it up and that's how they eat and eat plankton and and all of that. So they're they're really good to eat. They don't have them high mercury levels like a carp does or anything like that. And you want to get up in there. One more here. There. You got it. Now you just want to kind of do it in reverse. Once you got that, and you can flip it over again, and then do the same thing again. Get your knife underneath the scale, just like that. Keep it up, plunge it in there, and then you want to cut up, just like that. Okay. And then again, when you get here by the anal fin, just cut up. And there's what you'll have. You'll have that, and you'll have this. This grows tomatoes. Take my, take my knife, give this a couple good little scrapes here. And that's that. Now, you can see right here where these ribs end on both sides. This belly meat, no good. I don't like it. So what I do is I just follow just about a half an inch below them ribs, just like that. Same thing on the other side. So now you'll end up with a cut just like that. Just take your knife, it's really easy. Almost peels apart. You got that fin on there, that belly meat, that's garbage. Now, now you got a nice fillet. Take and we're gonna peel the ribs out. But now we're gonna go right down to the meat or right down to the skin right here and we're going to get as much of this meat with these ribs as we possibly can because believe it or not this is some of the finest eating there is these ribs and that's what you want you'll see you've got a little bit of red meat on here i want to trim that off anything that's red is really not that good to eat we got one rib cage there same thing here. See a little bit of red meat on there. I'm going to trim that off. That one's good. Now, now I take what I call the tenderloin. You see a really black or red line basically right there. Or that white line that's the center of the fish. You want to cut just along that right down to the skin. We're going to take that meat. Now, this meat, if you don't have a meat grinder, you might want to get one. Or probably not keep that. 
If you don't have a meat grinder and you don't have access to one, you would probably just throw this away. This is really bony, but I'll tell you, it tastes so good. So we're going to show you how we take care of all them bones. Again, just take that off of there. Give you that nice little tenderloin. Again, that's garbage. Flip this over. See that really dark red meat right there? I'm going to take that off. That's good. Same thing here. You got this really, really dark red meat. That was getting down towards that tail. What you want to do is you want to just take and take that right off. There you go. And that's pretty good. Now we're going to wash these babies up. And we'll be cooking them. I got myself a whole big tub of fish right here to, to clean. So I'm going to be at this a while, but when I get done, we're going to make some buffalo ribs and carp balls. And we'll show you that next. But uh, let me get these done and we'll head in the house. Got a little rain coming, so I got to hurry up. All right, we got uh, all our buffalo cleaned up yesterday. We got the back straps. We got the ribs here. Um, I got a bunch of the ribs already put in the freezer. I got all the back straps right here. Um, I'm going to show you how I prepare everything. A um, couple of things. I like to put the back straps in the fridge or in the freezer for a little bit and get them nice and firm so they're not really mushy. Um, and then the next thing I do is I'll just cut this down. You can hear them bones in there. This thing, has, they have just huge, huge bones. But we're going to show you how to take care of that here in a second. Get it cut like that or however big chunks your grinder can take. Then we're going to go right here. we got our grinder. And you can watch, this pretty much grinds up every single bone that's in there. Just like that. No bones left whatsoever. We do up a whole batch of these, then you can freeze them in the refrigerator just like hamburger. As you can see, it's got no more bones in it, and it's basically like a real mushy hamburger, and that's exactly what we want. Um, next thing I'm going to show you how to do is how I prepare my ribs. Take them slabs of ribs right there, and you can see the, each individual rib in there. And we want to keep this kind of uniform, and basically, you want to cut that rib and make it just like, uh, would be like a chicken finger size. It's like that. Keep them all uniform. As you start out, you're going to be cutting maybe one rib, then you'll go to two, and then you'll get down to where here at the bottom just to keep them uniform size so they cook evenly. You're probably going to end up going to three ribs. But that's how we do that. We'll get them all cut up here. And now we're going to show you how we cook them. <clears throat> this is kind of my own little recipe and, and everybody really likes it. So uh, we'll set this off to the side. First thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you the ground up buffalo. Get yourself some. You're obviously, if you've got a bigger family, you're going to make a bigger batch than this. But this is what I do. And uh, I don't really measure this stuff out. This is uh, original recipe, shore lunch. Any good fish batter will work or breading. We want that. Then I use uh, Italian breadcrumbs. Just anybody's Italian breadcrumbs will work. You know, I'll throw some of that in there. Then I use garlic powder. Now you want to make sure you use garlic powder because if you use garlic salt, this recipe is going to end up way too salty. You put a little garlic powder in there. And then I use Lowry's season salt. And that's pretty salty, so. If, like I said, if you use the garlic salt, you'll end up having a really salty meal. And we want to mix this stuff up. And as you can see, it's starting to not be so mushy. It's actually starting to get pretty firm. And you don't have to mix this up so you got all of the breadings in there mixed. You can leave some of the breading can be stuck to the side here. That's okay, because then you're going to roll it around and... We we'll use that to make the balls. So there's how we do that. Next thing I'll show you how I make my 
breading for the uh, the ribs. Same thing I use for the ribs. I use Shore Lunch original recipe. Put some of that in there. And again, bigger the people, the more people, the bigger the batch you make. About it. Probably got two thirds breading, one third breadcrumbs. Again, garlic powder. Use the powder, not the salt. And Lowry season salt. And we want to mix that all up. So it looks nice and uniform. Just like that. Alright, we're going to start out with our fish balls because they take a little longer to cook. Uh, we got our deep fryer here. Usually it's about 350 degrees. You want to make balls just about that size. Careful, drop them babies in there. Like I said, these take a little bit longer to cook. That one's probably a little bit big. We're going to take it some off of there. Just like that. Maybe the size of a, a little bit bigger than a ping pong ball. I'm going to make a couple of them. Just like that. And drop that baby in there. Now we'll do some ribs. We'll go over here. Now the ribs. This is just uh, plain eggs that I've cracked in here and, mix and, and beat up. Um, it's called an egg wash. This really helps the, the breading stick to the fish. Take a couple of our curved buffalo ribs here. Just like that. Get them covered in egg pretty good. And you just want to take and put them in the breading. Just like that. Get them nice and covered. Drop them babies in the oil. Do up a good batch. Like I said, you know, you can you can do all carp balls, you can do all ribs, whatever you want to do. I like to mix it up. One good night of bow fishing and you can put on one hell of a fish fry. So we'll put them in there. Excuse me. Now you want to cook them babies until they're golden brown. The ribs you want to be just a golden brown and the carp balls you want them to be just a little bit darker because they're a little bit thicker. Um, between grinding and the hot oil it just disintegrates all of them bones. We got a batch made. Here's what they look like. Get yourself some tartar sauce. Hmm. Hmm. Awesome. The ribs, you just. You can see how big them rib bones are in there. Hmm. Better than walleye. So that's it. Got cart balls, buffalo ribs. No sense in uh, throwing them back. I promise you, if you do this, you will be eating these things all the time. When your friends hear you're making them, they'll be coming to visit, guaranteed. That's it. Get out on the water and get you some.